Hello. I'm just, I just got an extra little half an hour. <laughs> and so I'm going to make some more plates before I run out because I've been making plates this morning. And I just realized, oh my God, I need plates. So I thought I'd go live. I won't be able to see anything that anybody says because of the way that my camera is rigged up. But happy to be here. And hmm, if you sent, oh, if you uh, comment, I will definitely reply later. So if you have a question, I just won't be able to answer it live. I use three pounds. I'm really working lately on relaxing my hip flexors. I do not need hip flexors to center clay. I feel like I do. I'm using them right now because it's the only way. It's not the only way. Okay. <clears throat> so in my body, it's like this whole new, I have to be a whole new way. Um, I'm just feeling it lately that I have to be different in my body. I have to learn how to relax my hip flexors when I throw. I think I'm going to make four of these and then run. <laughs> four, four plates and run. They take me, I think, about three minutes each. They're three pounds and they take three minutes. Um, and I haven't made them in years, except for probably a couple at the holidays. So I have to relearn. I have to re remember and relearn all of my old little tricks. One of them is to grab the clay for the rim here, cut off this excess at this stage. If you do it too late, it's too hard to get it off. This has to be all the way on the wheel. I mean, on the bat. Undercut that thing. And then it should come out really nice. This is how you know if you did it right. If it comes out really nice like that. Here's one last little piece. Ah, And that just makes everything better right there. So. These will be. 10 inch dinner plates. Although for myself, I kind of like a nine inch dinner plate though. It'd be a little variation probably. I hope you have a good view. I think it is pretty good. You can leave me a comment and let me know whether or not you think it's a good view. Now, one thing I don't remember is whether or not it's better to cut the plate off now or wait and cut it off easy later. I do it now because it's easier when it's just right here on the wheel. I think it's gonna be totally fine. That's my feeling. So I'll show you the profile of the plate because if you do that and take the edge off, it's gonna minimize trimming. See, there's not that much for me to trim there. And I'm in the process of making myself a set of plaster bats. At least it's in the mental phase right now. That's where I'm at in the process. And they're gonna have a channel for the feet. And then I'll probably use like two and a half pounds because I won't be trimming a half pound off of every plate. I don't know if it's a half pound, maybe quarter pound, but in any case, I won't have to trim them. This will be it. Three minutes, done. Plate, done. <laughs> That's the goal at least. It's probably more like three and a half minutes. Okay. Not like anybody really cares <laughs> except for me. So that's another thing I'm working on is <clears throat> less uh, inner pressure, pressuring myself to do it the fastest, the best, you know, and enjoying the process more, being more kind of in the mystery of it all 
And yet I, one of my new phrases that I just love that's really helping me all along the way is there's nothing mysterious about what's happening here. Nothing. I mean, except for that it's magical and amazing that we can make pots. <laughs> I mean, that's the coolest thing in the world. So that in itself, like the meta is is magical and mysterious and amazing. How could it be that this is my life? That's amazing. That's true. But um, as far as the clay goes and the wheel and my body and tools and the way the clay moves and the speed and the water, nothing is mysterious. It's all physics. It's all very obvious. If I put my finger here, this will happen. So let me see here. I feel like I want a little bit wider. So when I do this, the diameter of this like beginning part, this flat mass, this is the plate, you know, and then I just have to throw the rim on it, but I think I'll do this on a couple of them. Um, it's almost out to the rim, ideally. I mean, to my throwing stick. So it's not going to get that much further here. So here's where I use this tool. This tool I inherited from my friend Chris Gum, who was a potter and who died. And um, some amazing person got in touch with me and asked me if I wanted some of his tools. I don't remember her name now, but I was just so touched that she did, and I took a few. And it's amazing. It's amazing to have his tools. Chris Gum was an amazing potter. Look him up. G, I think it's G-U-M-M, -M, Chris Gum. I have some pots in here. His. He was so nice. He used to give me pots. Okay, now this little piece I'll throw out now to the rim. Just, I mean, I keep saying that to my, throw the rim out to my throwing stick. That's so all the plates are the same size. And then I compress. I've already compressed. This is kind of more just finishing it off. All right. Oh my God, my whole life will change if I have plates with feet cut into them. I'm gonna make tons of plates. That's the thing I, I mean, I love every aspect of pottery, almost every aspect I love. Um, but trimming plates <laughs> is down towards the bottom with like glaze, mixing glazes or glaze development. I, I really like the idea of doing that. I'm just, if I could just do something all the time, it would just be this, just make stuff. Make stuff, make stuff. There's always so much more to make that still hasn't been made. I don't know if you can see this over here, but I'm noticing that I have a little ding in my, one of my, in the first plate I made. When I took it off, it scraped this probably. And um, so when that happens, I turn the little owie to face me so uh, it will not get lost. I see it. It's in my face. I won't forget to clean that up. But it's, now is not the best time to do that. This is the one phase of pottery, um, at least wheel throwing stuff, that uh, where it's not, it's not a good idea to fix it right now. You have to wait until that rim firms up. Not not have to, but for me it's better. Let's say. I think it's better. I learned to center these plate forms and platters on the way out. You don't have to center it and then and then pull it out. Okay, great. I said, okay, great, because I got a text message from somebody about my half hour delay. 
Coca, maybe I get a little bit more. <laughs> I'm thinking about raising my wheel up and having a standing wheel. I just, I absolutely need to do this differently. I can just feel it in my body, my hip flexors, I'm too tight. I was like, where can I change it? How can I change it? What's possible? So important to respect the little messages from our bodies. I just read an awesome article by, I think it, I'm almost positive it was John Glick and um, about his sciatica and you know how he like in, in the um, vein of being a kind of like some kind of like romantic experience of being a production potter we often and i'm such a like listen to my body person but i think for years i got into bad habits even though i was trying not to actively trying not to i've always been the body person but you know i think that there's habits that um there we go Let's see i'm just remembering something else about my process to even have less work later. Okay, and better plate. Things come back, things come back. I've taken like six or seven years, I think, for the most part off of doing pottery. So it's like coming back, noticing how things feel in my body. remembering how to make things. It's very multifaceted um, and fun. It's amazing to think I could do it in a way that's more, more embodied, more aware, more peaceful, like less pressure, less rushing. Stuck to my finger. <laughs> Okay, one more and then I think I gotta go. To lift the bat off, if you can do it right by a bat pin, that's kind of ideal. With these plates, I actually haven't always, I don't, I'm trying to minimize my bending down, that's one of my body awareness things that I'm doing. And So I haven't been looking for the bat pins. I've just been cutting them off today. Or not cutting them off, I mean um, lifting them off from wherever it, it happens to be. But almost always in my life. I think today is the first day I've ever done that. <laughs> I've, I've always uh, first found the bat pins and lifted it right from that bat pin spot. But I read recently on Clay Buddies, this person said, Always remember there are no rules in pottery, you know, just you can keep experimenting and and it's kind of a trap to get stuck in one way of doing things. So good to stay agile in our minds and our bodies and one thing that has been helping me actually is just when I notice that I'm gripping and somewhere in my body is just to let myself wiggle a little bit and move and sway and especially rocking on my um, ischial tuberosities. <laughs> Those are also called the sits bones. Um, kind of being more aware of that spot and resting there. It's been really helpful. Last one, just digging underneath here. That's what I'm doing, just digging underneath, lifting the rim kind of up and out of the way so I can cut this off. 
I'm just going down towards the wheel like once, just like with throwing, once per rotation. I'm not rushing to get through that. I'm trying to make a nice clean cut there. And then under. This one's going to come right off. Took me a while to remember how I did that. I was like, I know it gets better than this. I know that easier. And then here's that part that I just realized is like I dig under there with my fingers and I kind of throw a little bit here. I'm kind of throwing. Okay. Try to keep my hands clean. Okay. Ta da! Support the rim underneath here. I like a nice flat ribbed surface here because I will do some glaze trailing on the rims until I come up with new style. New style, maybe with some fun stamps. I'm really into the stamps these days. Okay, last thing is to find my, oops, here it is. Broccoli rubber band. Somebody asked me recently, what is that pink thing? I lost my pink one, so now I'm using the purple one. But the colorfulness of them makes them easy to find, easier than like if you use a little piece of plastic. I know some people do that. Okay. And that is that. Let's see what time it is. Perfect. Yep. Okay. That's the end of my plates here. Let me see if I can find that fat pin. There it is. <laughs> there you go. And ta-da! Yay, I'm so happy with how they're coming out. They're, they just feel like they're going to be really great plates. And I just want to have tons of them. <laughs> and I have to make salad plates and platters and big serving bowls. That's what's on my roster here for the near future. So, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna start doing demos out the driveway, put a sign on the corner. Let me clean that up a little bit better. Put a sign on the corner, pottery demo. And then I'm thinking about getting like a wheel that you could spin like the wheel of fortune and on it would say like make a bowl or put a handle on a mug or uh you know whatever customer's choice or whatever you know i can kind of put things on there that i'm in in process with so but then it could be more interactive for the demo with my wheel is not a good idea i think it's going to be so fun okay well if you got to this point Thanks for watching, and this will get uploaded onto my podcast. I have a Amy the Potter podcast, Wisdom from the Wheel, and um, this will be there. So cheers, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Hi, Elizabeth. I see that you're there. I can't see anybody else. Debbie, Tamara. Oh, like somebody else too. Jennifer. Hi. Thanks for coming.